So, there I was, laying in a hospital bed. I had a huge needle jammed in my arm. I had a tube stuffed up my nostril. I was pissing in a bottle, and I couldn't decrap without help. And then the phone rang. And who should it be but my good pal, Daniel Levesque, telling me he was not going to let me die until I accepted his God as my God. Or in other words, as long as I don't believe in his gods, I get to live forever. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Hello, welcome to Raven Conservative. I'm Daniel Levesque, your host. Uh, forgive the uh, cuts and edits that you're going to see. I have notes I'm going to be referring to throughout this to make sure that I'm getting everything right. And A creationist who wants to get everything right? Who is that really? All right, body snatcher, please release Daniel unarmed. Uh, this is another episode of Crap Science, and... He sure got that right, by golly. And today we are tackling uh, the science of, of humans and chimps being, well, depending on who's writing or speaking, anywhere from 96 to 99 percent genetically identical. This... Yes, and please, nobody laugh when Daniel comes to conclusions that the people actually working in the field have not come to. Uh, Daniel knows better than those people. This is a lie. Oh. And just to make it clear, by lie he means the science of genetics, not his video. But gotta make that clear here. Allow me to explain why. The first point that I'd like to bring up is one that I have yet to actually see addressed in any articles that I have been able to find uh, on this subject. And that That's right, I'm sure Daniel's checked out dozens of creationist websites and he just couldn't find the answer. That is the fact that the chimpanzee genome is actually 10% larger than the human genome. Now let's do some basic math here. Okay. How do you have something that is 10% larger than something else be 96 to 99% identical? Pop quiz time! Which of the following two scenarios do you believe is the most likely? Scenario number one. Every single geneticist on the planet cannot do basic junior high school mathematics. Do you think that is reasonable? Please raise a hand, left or right. Scenario number two. Daniel Levesque is ignorant about what he is attempting to talk about. If you think that scenario is the more reasonable one, please lift a finger. Either hand will do. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm waiting still. See, I, I spent a great deal of time looking for an answer to this. And I'm sure good old Daniel left no creationist website out there unexamined. And no matter how many evolutionists I looked up, I didn't find an answer. Well, there you go. You shouldn't have looked up evolutionists. You should have looked up what scientists say on the matter. Uh, there was some speculation. It was all very weak. You know, it's just you cannot quantify a difference of ten percent in total genome size in such a way that you can realistically get you know, the even the typical ninety-eight percent genetic cylinder, which is what we're going to use from now on. Because that's right. You know the geneticists out there, the biochemists out there, you know the people actually working in the field of genetics and comparative genetics between species. They can't add, they can't subtract, they can't multiply, and they can't divide. Thank the gods that we have Daniel Levesque here in YouTube. 
to point this fact out to everybody. That's the average, it's what most people will say is about 98%. Okay? You cannot get 98% similarity out of something, two things that are 10% difference in size. You know, that. Therefore, either every scientist out there is just horribly, horribly wrong, or Daniel Levesque has misunderstood something. You know, that and that can't be, they just can't be 98% similar. It's a mathematical impossibility. And thus, using just his fingers, Daniel Levesque has refuted 60 years of genetic science. If I have a container, uh, I will represent this finger span as a container, and I have another container that has a content volume-wise of 90% of this container, and then I throw out a very large portion of the, uh, we can call it a 100% container, and I throw out a very large portion of the 90% of the 100% container, and then compare the two, I can get 98.2% to 98.6% identical content between the containers. And Daniel looked, and he looked, and he looked, and nowhere on those creationism evolutionist websites that he looked at, could he discover the answer? Instead, he would rather believe that scientists out there can't add, can't subtract, can't multiply, can't divide. Human DNA and chimpanzee DNA has a hell of a lot of DNA that codes for nothing. Not just non-coding for proteins, but non-coding for anything. Therefore, when you do a thermal test by bonding human DNA and chimpanzee DNA and determining how strong that bond is, it discards all that non-coding DNA. So what you are actually measuring is the similarity between the coding DNA, including proteins and including regulatory genes. Note that we will see that a very large variation between extremely similar species will occur when you look only at the genes that code for protein. Even between individuals of the same species, we will see the exact same wide variation and for the exact same reason. Daniel won't understand any of this, but if you want to read the article in question, I have included a link up here in this video's description to a PDF file that you can browse at your leisure.